What Washington is smothered by right now is this. The freaking sequester, which Congress and the White House agreed to, which they almost unanimously agree would be a terrible thing to inflict on the country, and which they could just decide not to do simply by repealing it, but apparently they're not going to repeal it. The White House taking every opportunity now to spell out the harm that this thing is going to do to the country. They've put out fact sheets on the hundreds of thousands of jobs expected to be lost with workers in every state. Uh, the TSA is warning that air travel is going to become a nightmare. The president today at a shipyard in Newport News talking about the devastating expected effect, particularly on areas that are heavily economically dependent on the military. The Republican Speaker of the House today, for his part, demanding that the Senate fix it. That they get off their starts with A, rhymes with bass, and do something to stop this thing. Because he's not going to. It looks like it's going to happen, even though this is a purely voluntary thing. Because, eh, why not inflict wanton damage on the country and throw millions of people out of work? Why not? The animating principle, the animating fear or assertion or argument behind this roundhouse punch to our own face is supposedly the deficit. Right? There's so much worry about the out-of-control spiraling deficit that we must punch ourselves in the face like this. These cuts won't really make a difference in the deficit, but by agreeing to lose this game of chicken and go flying off this cliff, punching ourselves in the face all the way down, we will somehow show symbolic commitment or something to turn around our out-of-control deficit. That, I guess, is the idea. Here, I guess, is the deficit. Here's what it was when Barack Obama took office in 2009, in the midst of the worst economic freefall since the Great Depression. Then here's the deficit in 2010. And here it is for the next year. Yeah, and here it is for last year. Yep, and here's the track for this year. Yeah, see how it's spiraling out of control? See how much it's growing higher and higher all the time? Yeah, no. Actually, down is not up, night is not day, and the deficit is getting smaller. It's dropped by hundreds of billions of dollars during Barack Obama's presidency. We are currently experiencing the fastest deficit reduction in several generations, and nobody knows it. We're in the midst of a major national crisis, self-imposed, brought on by fear and loathing and worry and outrage over the supposed state of the deficit, and 90% of the country is wrong about what the state of the deficit is. And I'm not saying 90% as a made-up, rounded, hyperbolic number. That's the actual number. Look. Bloomberg News just pulled on this. Is it your sense that this year the deficit is getting bigger or getting smaller or staying about the same as last year? 62% of Americans say the deficit is getting bigger. 28% of Americans say the deficit is staying about the same. You add those up, 62 plus 28, that's 90% of the country that gives a wrong answer to that question. So how many Americans know the right answer? The proportion of the American public who knows the correct answer, which is that the deficit is getting smaller, is 6% total. If we are supposedly so worried about this problem, though, we are willing to inflict pretty big economic pain on the country starting on Friday in order to strike a symbolic pose of seriousness in addressing this awful problem, wouldn't you think that more than 6% of people in the country should be able to correctly identify what the problem is? Joining us now is Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, Democrat of Ohio, and Jared Bernstein from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. He's a former economic policy advisor to Vice President Joe Biden. He's also an MSNBC and CNBC contributor. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sorry that I made you sit through the Alaska gun rights thing. <laughs> it's fascinating. It's, it's, there's a lot going on that we aren't working on because we're working on this problem that we created for ourselves. Um, but Jared, let, let me start with you. On the 6% issue, how is it that only 6% of Americans understand what is true about the deficit right now? Uh, I think it has to do a lot with, with all the noise that's trying to point their thinking in the other direction. There are a lot of people in this town whose policy agenda, whose ideology, really depends on everyone's hair being on fire about the budget deficit. Because their ultimate goal is to cut government, to slash government, to get rid of social insurance. And if people actually are aware of the kind of numbers you just showed, the fact that the deficit has fallen by half as a share of GDP. You know, they say we have a spending problem. I just looked at the numbers uh, uh, the other day. Between 2009 and 2012, spending was up 0.6 percent. 
point. Let, let's, out of control, so, spiraling out of control, dude, so, obviously. So it, it, it's a very ideologically motivated argument. Uh, again, if you're freaked out about the budget deficit, you want to slash, burn, sequester, cliff, all the rest of it. Congresswoman Kaptur, as somebody who is in the middle of this thing, first of all, do you agree that that's what's driving the misperception of the underlying factors here? And secondly, do you think that anything could be done to avert this problem before Friday? I think in terms of political strategy on the part of the Republicans who are being so obstinate uh, and uncompromising, uh, they've managed to move the debate from jobs to sequester. Uh, I'm not sure all members of Congress could define sequester. Uh, it means automatic cuts with no thought. The meat axe just falls wherever. Uh, but they've managed to shift to a different turf and therefore we're not arguing about how do we create more jobs in this country because with a 7.8 percent unemployment rate you're not going to balance the budget. We have to cut that by half. Jared's tried so hard in his own career uh, in service to the people of our country to do that. So they've shifted the debate and and we're on their turf. We need to be talking about economic growth and how what they're proposing is actually going to cause more unemployment. Do you know that just in the defense area, uh, and I'm the first Democratic woman in history to serve on defense appropriations, if you can believe that, and it's 2013, uh, uh, we will likely see over 734,000 civilian Defense Department employees furloughed with a 20% pay cut uh, uh, over the next 22 days. And, um, That's those immediate. That's, That's immediate. immediate. Three quarters of a million people over the next three weeks. That's right. And they won't be able to, you know, they're going to cut back on gas purchases, purchases of uh, clothing for their children, food. This goes directly to the bottom line of growth in this economy, and it's going to be a damper on that growth. Jared, from an economic perspective, the prescriptions that we have heard, like Congresswoman Kaptur just explained and like the White House has been explaining about what's going to happen if this goes through, is that kind of rapid not paying too much attention to the details contraction that we will see starting Friday if this happens, would it have a significant negative economic Not effect? only would it, but it already is. Remember, the sequester is fiscal contraction on top of fiscal contraction. The expiration of the payroll tax holiday has already taken over $100 billion out of the paychecks of working Americans this year. Now, I, I, I've looked at the estimates of economists across the board, nonpartisans, who uh, argue that, uh, put it all together, add the sequester on top of it, and you're talking about growth that's about a percent and a half slower this year than it would be otherwise. Let me just read you a quick quote from somebody today up, 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 up on Capitol Hill. Moreover, besides having adverse effects on jobs and incomes, a slower recovery would lead to less actual deficit reduction in the short run. Now, that's not Karl Marx or Chairman Mao. That's Ben Bernanke. He's, not, he's saying that not only does slower growth hurt us in precisely the ways the Congresswoman mentioned, growth in jobs, it actually is counterproductive if your goal is truly deficit reduction. So the deficit is getting smaller. We're setting our hair on fire about the deficit as if it's getting larger. And in order to show the seriousness of how on fire our hair is, we're going to make our deficit problem worse. Exactly. <laughs> and, we're going, and we're going to put a damper on growth. We're going to put more people out of work. And there will be more suffering where there needs to be recovery. What do you see as the way out of this? In Congress, you, since the Republicans won control of the House um, and were sworn in in 2011, we've had these repeated trips to the brink, whether it's the debt, by, debt ceiling fights or the government shutdown fights and now this sequester fight, all of them coming to the 11th hour, all of them self-manufactured crises that weren't imposed on the country from without but were designed crises. Right. How do we get out of this? Manufactured crises. Well, we get out of it politically. When people go to the polls, uh, in 2014, we need a Democratic House. But what's happened is that the gerrymandering in a state like Ohio has been so severe that a state that voted 50-50 uh, half for President Obama, half uh, for Governor Romney uh, actually is only sending four out of 16 members uh, Democrat. on the Democratic side of the aisle. So it's 25 percent. We could have an additional four members just from Ohio uh, that would be more representative of how, what our population actually is. But we don't have a representative house because of the gerrymandering that happened. Does the, de does the Democratic Party have a plan to fix that? I mean, the Republicans have, are very overt and very proud of how they have been able to use redistricting, use gerrymandering to get more seats than they were due by the number of votes yes. that they have. They're, they brag about it. They say this is one of their great successes of the last election cycle. Do the Democrats have a plan to counter it? Well, I'll tell you, uh, Chairwoman uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz has talked about 
about this. She's talked about what we need to do to prepare for the future. And I know that those who are paying close attention are very aware of how unfair, unfairly representative the House currently is. In terms of what's about to happen and what's what we are on the self-imposed precipice of, uh, Jared, how when you said that damage has already been done and that more damage is coming, right? How much of it is reversible, and what would be the best way to reverse it? Well, first of all, uh, it would be great if policymakers would at least take a, a do no harm, a Hippocratic oath that says, um, for, if, I, if I were pulling levers, I would uh, implement jobs measures of the type the president introduced in the Jobs Act, the type that Congresswoman Kaptur is constantly banging up there. I actually don't think that's uh, very realistic right now. Uh, so uh, my, my first argument would be to do no harm, just put these kinds of uh, spending cuts uh, off until the economy is firing on all cylinders again. Now let me be precise. I'm not implying that this fiscal drag that we've talked about, sequester, the other uh, uh, cuts we've mentioned, um, is going to throw the economy into a recession. But too often the discussion is uh, we're in recession bad or we're not in recession good. No. The fact that growth is already slow and it's going to be slower means that the unemployment rate is going to be stuck where it is. I mean, uh, uh, the congresswoman said we're talking about the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs. When the, uh, when, the, when the GDP starts growing below 2%, which, which is what will happen if all this stuff goes through and sticks, uh, we're not going to be growing fast enough to absorb new people coming into the job market, to provide opportunities for the currently unemployed. So it's, it's, it's this kind of persistent slog that just eats away at families' living standards. If the, the whole, it's, it's not just stop digging. I really feel like, in right. a way, it's stop punching yourself in the face. Exactly. At this point, it's, uh, it's self-inflicted and wanton, and it makes no mathematical sense. Ta-da. <laughs> Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, Democrat of Ohio, Jared Bernstein, Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, and an MSNBC and CNBC contributor. Thank you both so much for being here. Really Thank you, Rachel.